If you can't even decent to your mom, what make you think that you can decent to men? Hey beautiful people, how you all doing today? It's your girl Destiny here and welcome back to my channel. How you all doing? Hope you guys are doing great. So this video, it's a very interesting video. Like I feel like everybody should watch this video because we need to talk. So this video is a video of a sister who came online to talk to women and she was telling women that, you know what? It's time to decenter your mother. As much as we're talking about all oh, decenter men in your life, one of the persons you should decenter in your life is your mother. And she wanted to give a whole lot of explanation and details of why you, especially women, should decenter their mothers from their life. How a lot of women don't have an identity away from their mother because naturally, that's the person that molds you to who you are and sometimes the molding is not even molding anymore i really find a lot of the things she has to say very very interesting and a lot of this conversation has gotten a lot of people talking so there's going to be a part two of people reacting to dissenter mothers and, and i find it really interesting so anyway this video we're going to hear everything the sister has to say she has so much to say which i'm going to leave a handle down in the description box but please, nobody should go there to go send hate or anything. That's one of the reasons I don't leave creators' handles in my comments or in the, in the description. But please, I'm going to try and leave a handle, which is getting me nervous already thinking about it. But please, guys, nobody should go there. If you don't like anything she's saying, please just grow. Just just go. Don't You don't have to send hate there. It's an opinion and it's fine. Okay, so anyway, guys, let's go hear what she has to say. Then I'll come back and share my thought and what I think about this conversation. Okay, so let's go. I talk a lot about decentering men, but can we please discuss the importance behind decentering your own mom? And the reason why it's so important we discuss decentering moms is because this is where it usually starts. The reason why a lot of women cannot decenter men is because it started at home. It started with them not being able to decenter their own mom. And this is usually the root cause behind why a lot of women cannot decenter men. When it comes down to forming your own perspectives, forming your own opinions, making your own decisions, your mom should not always be the first source. Your mom should not always be the center. And the reason why a lot of women have a hard time self-trusting and being sovereign is because they depend on their mothers way too much for validation. And something that I learned is the girls who are more likely to resent their moms are the girls who did not descend to her. They realize that her own in life, they mirrored their entire life around their mother's expectations, their mother's desires, their mother's standards. And they realize I never made my own life. I never made my own decisions. I never formed my own perspectives because my mom ruled my entire life in decision making. And this is where the resentment sets in because you realize you never lived your life for you. You live your life for somebody else. There comes a point in every single woman's life where she needs to learn independence and not just physically, but emotionally, mentally, and spiritually. And this is when the mother passes down all of her knowings and intuition to her daughter. But a lot of mothers like the control. A lot of mothers like dependent daughters. So they don't pass down their knowings. They don't pass down their intuition because they like their daughters to be easily controlled and manipulated. And when it comes down to building your own life and being sovereign, you need to learn how to take your mom off of the pedestal. You need to be sent to your mom. Your mom should not be there to always govern your life decisions and your perspectives. You need to learn how to source all of that from yourself. So when it comes down to your decision making and your perspectives and what you want to do with your life, that should come from you. That should come from your own internal knowing, not your mother's. And I will say this to the end of time, no one knows your life like you do. No one knows the direction where your life should go like you do. So when it comes down to making your own life decisions and sourcing anything from anybody, that should always come from you. You should always be the number one source. So please, decenter men, but also decenter your mom. The reason why it's also very important to teach women to be sent to their mom, and I completely forgot this point, but it's because you're going to have no friends. 
Okay, one day you're going to wake up and you're going to realize you have no friends and no one to hang around with because you and your mom depend on each other so, so much. You forgot about your actual social life and you have let your mom dictate who you're going to be friends with for so, so long. Your friends find you annoying now. So I had this childhood friends and we were friends for years. We're no longer friends now, but we were friends for years. And she was the only child. She had no siblings. She just had her, her mom, and her dad. And her mom and her was so, so freaking close. Like when I tell you her mom was her literal best friend, her mom was her best friend. Her mom was active in every single part of her life. Like when I say her mom was active in her life, her mother was there. Okay, her mom was in her life. Ignore the cutting grass outside is kind of loud, but with me being in a house full of like four siblings, I would kind of get like a little jealous because I was like, dog, girl, you got 24 seven hour support and assistance from your mom. And my mom has to deal with her, him, him, like, it, it was a house full of people, but she had her mom all to herself. So me and my friend end up meeting this new girl, which makes a group of three. So her mom meets my mom, her mom meets her mom. And basically what you're trying to do was create a friendship group amongst the moms. So whenever we would go hang out, she can hang out with the moms. And I know it sounds cute at first, but it gets a little strange, especially when we would have like drama in the friendship group mind you we're like in middle school and she would literally take our drama and go discuss it amongst the moms so fast forward the mom does not like the new girl mom because they get into it so they have their little beef and that trickles down to the new girl and my friend because it's like you know our moms don't like each other so now we're also getting into fights because you know of just some petty stuff so the mom ended up going into her child's ear telling her that you can't be friends with this girl i don't want you hanging out with her no more i don't like her her. she's a bad influence just all that kind of little stuff right basically gossiping to her child about this new girl so me i was like really really close to the new girl i loved her i liked her as a friend but the mom did not like her mom so she kind of took it out on the child as well I kid you not, some weeks later, they're not friends no more. The friendship group gets broken up because she ended up centering her mom's perspective and opinion over her own opinion and perspective. Even as we got older, I would watch her form perspectives and make her decisions based on what her mom thinks and what her mom desires for her. 2021 me and her cut off the friendship so i started to say there's nothing wrong with having a good relationship with your mom but it becomes a problem when you base all of your life decisions and opinions around your mom so much so you have no friends left a lot of people don't talk about that period in a woman's life in which she breaks away from the hold that her mother has on her and what i mean by this is she's not centering her opinions she's not centering what her mom wants from her and she's becoming her own person outside of her mom and something that has to be mentioned is the women who never break away from their mom's hold. They are forever dependent on their mom and they don't see how harmful this is. The truth is a lot of women allow their moms to hold them back and a lot of women will let their moms in this lifetime stop them from being the person who they are meant to be. And it's because they allow their moms to dictate every single aspect of their lives and they never question it. And if they do question it, it don't take much for them to be silenced again. When I first moved out my mom's house, that was a very lonely, critical and a very isolating experience. It was so unique. And it was that kind of experience because for the first time I was learning independence outside of my mom. I knew the only way I was going to find true sovereignty in my own womanhood was if I broke away from my mom's hold. The only way I was going to learn how to channel my own personal energy was if I left her environment and created my own environment. And I say this even with the fact my mom was a good mom and my mom taught me so much of what I know today. And still with that, I can stand 10 toes in the fact that there has to be a point within a woman's life in which she is no longer centering her mom. 
when you first break away from your mom's hold is going to feel so chaotic because you're having to trust that everything that she has installed in you is going to work now in this new reality that you are creating for yourself and even she has to trust that all the knowings that she passed on to you will work in this new reality and I do have a podcast called Sacred Sharp Radio on Apple and Spotify. And I do have an episode called Descent to Your Mom in which I talked about this more in depth. So if you're interested, my podcast is in my bio. I fully meant it when I said the only way I was going to be able to fully decenter my mom was if I forgave her and stopped blaming her for the reason why my life turned out the way it turned out. There are parts where my mom could have shown up more and I'm pretty sure everyone has those aspects and those parts of their life in which they can say their mom could have done better in. However, if you spend this life blaming your mom for the reason why your life is not where it needs to be, you will be a very, very miserable person. Your mom cannot be the punching bag forever. And that's the truth that a lot of y'all are going to have to accept when it comes down to decentering your mom. Your mom cannot be the punching bag forever. And so when I learned that my mom cannot be my personal punching bag, that's when I invested in books and therapy and things that I knew could help me. That's when I began to really prioritize my self-care and my wellness because I understood at some point I have to take ownership of my life and where my life is going. You choosing to forgive your mom and you choosing to move on is not you forgetting what happened. A lot of people think when I say, hey, forgive your mom and move on so you can descend to her. They translate that as, oh, forget and just, you know, dust it to the side when it's actually fully acknowledging what happened and reclaiming your full power. It is acknowledging that, hey, this happened to me. However, even with it happening, to me, I can still create the life that I truly desire and want. I will not allow the pain from that situation derail me from my true purpose. I will not let the pain from my mother derail me from who I am supposed to be. This is what I mean when I say in order to descend to your mom, you are going to have to forgive her and move on. I speak to women and one of the main things they say is my mom did this and my mom did this and my mom and my mom and my mom and they create this life in which they center her and which they put their mom on this pedestal and they direct every single thing back to their mom and they never take full control of their lives because they make their moms their center and they blame their moms for every single thing. Yes, your mom may have created that foundation, but once you realize the foundation that you was walking on and you chose to not do anything about it, that is no longer your mom's fault. That is your fault. So a lot of y'all are going to have to learn in order to fully be sent to your mom, you're going to have to make a conscious decision, a loving decision, a healthy decision to forgive and move on. If you can't even decent to your mom, what make you think that you can decent to men? Decent to your mom comes before decent to men. Your mom was your first relationship. So you can't even start there with decentering. Throw everything else away because it starts with your mother. The reason why these center men is more popular to talk about is because number one is more easily understandable and number two is fun talking on subjects in which we're discussing finding identity outside of men. But that's like 5% of the real work. The real, real work is starting with your own mother, starting with the first woman in your life. The issue is we ran straight to talking about these century men when the truth is when it comes down to learning how to be a sovereign, independent, self-sourcing young woman, that is actually the last within the process. When you learn how to decenter your own parents, the rest will flow. Discussing decentering men without discussing decentering your own mom is like cutting the head off of a chicken. If you can grow your own identity outside of your mom, it will be nothing to grow an identity outside of men.
please go down in the comment section and share your thought love to know your thought on this conversation down in the comment section but please keep it respectful you're on this channel we're allowed to disagree but we do it in a respectful way but go down and share your thought love to know what you think about this conversation i feel like this conversation is very refreshing and i agree with most of the things she said and sometimes i'm just like mm, trying to digest it but there are some things i'm just like yeah Mm -hmm. so this video is going to be two parts so we're going to hear people's thoughts on it on the next part so you want to check out the next video so you get what people think about decentering their mom especially women what it is their thoughts on it okay so here's my own thought i'm going to give most of my thoughts on this video but some on the other video too so yeah so here's my thought on me. i agree with a lot of the things she's saying because especially in the society that i um, I live in, I live in Nigeria, I live in the continent, Africa. Your mother, like I've seen it repeatedly all around me. And you see a lot of girls, they basically just live their life just to impress their mom, to make sure their mom is proud of them. And a whole lot of them has lost their identity. I have friends, I have people around me that I know for sure that there are some certain things that they don't like, they will not, they don't want to do, but they will do it just because of their mom. I know of this one girl that she might not have money at all, but if the mom calls and says, you know what, I need this bag, this girl will use the last money in her bank account just to buy that bag for the mom, for the mom. Almost like she was fronting for the mom, like the mom should feel like she had her life together, her finances and all that. So because of that, subconsciously, she can't say no to her mom. And for me, how long do you want to do this? How long do you want to do this? But before I go on to talk more on this, I just want to give a shout out to my mom for really helping me to get into my elements because I get what you're saying. Like, I get what you're saying. But also, like I always say here on this channel is how especially as women we should do the work we should find healing heal our trauma love ourselves learn to live our life be independent live our life live our authentic truth without fear of being judged or being orchestrated by the society just live your authentic self and be happy like when i mean happy genuinely happy and i would say I, I talk about my mom once in a while and i know she's watching this video and i just want to say thank you to her even though we have have our downtime which i've shared with you guys like growing up it wasn't easy being our first daughter it was a whole lot of trauma that she she passed on to me and she inflicted on me and like the um sister said talking about yes your mom has inflicted this trauma on you your mom has laid this part on you. Now, if you choose to not do something about it, it's on you. And that's the part, I, the journey I came on. And I really like, my mom made it, uh, it was hard at first to have an identity outside my mom, my family, my parents, it was really hard. But I can say clearly, like, I'm the opposite of my mom in everything. Like, you see some of the things I talk about here, my mom would come on like, don't you think that was too much info? <laughs> That's my mom. Why me? I'm so comfortable in sharing, helping people heal and all that. But that to say is that my mom has gotten to that place that she knows, like everybody knows I already have my own identity. I have my own thoughts. I have my own ways. And it's been respected, including for my mom. And there was an incident that happened that my husband called my mom. I was talking to my mom about something I did. And normally in the African society, in my society, not African, let me speak about Nigeria, okay? In my society, when your husband calls like that and reports you to any of your parents, they usually call the woman and they are like, hey, this, the woman is always wrong here, yeah, okay? And there was this incident that happened that my husband called my mom. And there's one something I asked my mom. And then the African parents, before I continue, the African parents always found this habit before they even hear from their daughter, they already start apologizing to the, the, their in-law. And like, oh, in-law, we're so sorry. We'll talk to her. Not even hearing from the daughter, like what actually happened. And so this is not happened and my mom called. And I asked her, like, did you say, did you apologize on my behalf? I don't know why that question was something that came to my head. Like, did you apologize on my behalf? And she was like, no. She wanted to hear from me what happened because she knows that I am, that was, like, I will not do something without a solid reason. Like, I am not that stupid to do things just because, like, that she just wanted to hear from me, that she just told my husband that, you know what, I have heard you, I want to hear from my daughter, and then I will get back to you. And 
she doesn't know, but you see that incident and the way she handled it just made me really look at her another way. And that just made me feel like she has developed that level of trust and trust my decisions and know that I got it. And that's for me living outside her. And I agree with this, sister. You can have an amazing relationship with your mom and see this inside her. I have an amazing relationship now with my mom, even with the whole lot of trauma that we've been through, that she's inflicted in me and other. I have an amazing relationship. Myself and my mom, if we're on the phone, we can talk the day. But she knows, as much as she can have an opinion on things I want, she knows that she cannot influence it. She can only give her opinion, which is, I'm welcome to hear your opinion, okay? Like, that's me. That's just about like the same way we hear any other person's opinion. That's how we hear my mom's opinion. I will hear your opinion, but I will go back and I will make the final decision for my life because it is my life. And there's one thing my mom has repeatedly done this couple of years, few years b back to now, is that even though she doesn't agree with it, she will respect it. And ladies, I can tell you that you can actually do that. If, especially if you have a whole lot of trauma, you're on your healing journey. I'm not saying that, oh, don't talk to your mom again, except it is necessary for you to go no contact with her. But you can also have an amazing relationship and also build a identity outside your mom or whatever you're taught. And I feel especially women in my society, we need to unlearn and deconstruct a lot of the things we were taught because... Some of the things are also part of the trauma we live, like the way we serve men, the way we serve people, the way we serve society. We need to really unlearn a lot of those things. And our mothers will not let us, especially in my society, will not let us go tell you, that is how they do it. How I want you to do that. This is how they do it. It's against the law. It's against tradition. But you can actually do that. And I totally agree with this woman. For you to build your own identity, for you to do the work, for you to be on that self-healing journey, you need to desensitize your mom, your parents generally, like I mean your entire parents, so that you can form your own identity and live your authentic self. A lot of people are not living in the authentic self. A lot of people are still people pleaser, parent pleaser, mom pleaser. They orchestrate their life, they live their life just to please certain people and to make certain people proud. But when you look in the mirror, honestly, are you proud of who you are as a person? And I would say, like I told my mom when we were talking um, some time ago, I said 2023 was one of my most happy years because I started living my authentic self. I don't hold back. I don't, like, I was living my truth. You know, like, as Charlie speaking on a whole lot of things, I was living my truth, and I was not scared of who is going to hear it, what they want to think, or who is going to call me to say, don't say that, including my in-laws, my parents, my siblings. I wasn't scared. I wasn't bothered about their, what they think about me. I was just living my authentic truth. And for me, that is bliss. Like, that is bliss. Anyway, guys, please go down in the comment section and share your thoughts. Love to know what you think about this conversation down in the comment section. But please keep it respectful. You're on this channel. We're allowed to disagree. Okay, we're family. We disagree. Disagreement is normal here. Yeah, okay, so go ahead. Disagree with us. Agree with us, but do it respectful. Don't call each other names. Don't be rude to anybody. So, yeah, so go down and share your thoughts. I'm going to leave these content creators handle tiktok handle down in the description box but please i just want to say here on this channel we are peaceful and amazing people we have amazing conversation no hate if you don't like what she said just don't go there just let her be if you like what she said and you want to support a channel you love our take on it you want to see more of her you can go check her out <laughs> that's one of the reasons i don't put original creator cookers because look, some people ask about this before I end this video some people ask about this like why don't I put the creator's name in the description and all that the thing is that the type of conversation we have here on this channel is very controversial is very like people can have different opinions and for me it's fine like me personally it's fine but some people as much as I try to make this place a safe space for us to have conversation, which I love, I can't control what people do after seeing that video, especially from my page. And I've had an occasion where my channel was taken down. 
I could not post for almost two weeks because somebody reported my channel for sending hate to them. And that's why I don't leave creators handle. I'm clearing that up. That's why I don't do it. But a couple of videos, people have been asking for the original creator. That's why I'm going to do this. I'm nervous because I don't want my channel taken down saying that I send hate to anybody. Like, please, guys, let's not do it. That's why I've taken my time to explain this. Please, I will be doing this once in a while and see how it goes. But let's just see how it goes. Please, I know you guys here are very howdy, very matured. We have amazing conversation here. But yeah. Thank you guys so much, okay? Anyway, guys, go ahead and share your thought down in the comment section, but please keep it respectful, okay? Go down and share your thought. Go on and share this video with somebody that you want to be part of the conversation because that's what we do here. We have banging conversation. So go on and share this video. Give this video a thumbs up, smash the like button because this helps YouTube to put out my content for more people to see and that will be you supporting me and this channel. So go on and... Give it a thumbs up, share, comment, and even subscribe if you haven't subscribed. And I will see you guys in my next video. Deuces.